Hello everyone, I am 3F John, and today I decided to take another crack at the demo for Stygian, Reign of the Old Ones, by Cultic Games. This is a turn-based RPG that takes place in the Lovecraftian mythos. Um, a little background about the story, it takes place in the city of Arkham, and one day during the Black Day, the city of Arkham was ripped from our universe and thrown into an alien one. And we were told to follow someone named the Dismal Man, and that is the background, and the rest of the story will come up after I make my character. However, um, I tried to play through this once before as an occultist character, and failed miserably, so I decided I'd take another crack at it today. So I'm going to go ahead and make my character, and then we'll go ahead and get started. Alright, so here we are. This time around, I've decided to use the Explorer archetype with a humanistic belief system with the background of adventure. Um, our attributes, I have Physique at 6, Agility at 10, and I put points into Firearms, Athletics, and Survival. This character is a professional hunter and adventurer. While exploring the Dark Continent, he met an ancient tribe. What he views as simple tribal superstition will come back to haunt him. So let's begin and see if we can't make it through the entire demo this time. And the reason that it is a little difficult is the demo version has no save feature. So, it says it right there before you. But let's go ahead and get started and figure out what's happened to Arkham and how we can proceed. A year has passed since your encounter with that peculiar fellow known as the Dismal Man. When you last met, he instructed you, Find me, beyond Arkham, after the Black Day. At the time, these words did not mean much to you, but soon after, you would come to understand. On what is now known as the Black Day, under the shadow of the Awakened, the world you knew vanished, and with it, your hopes, future, and loved ones. For reasons unknown, the city of Arkham was separated from the carcass of Earth and exiled to another place under alien stars, a twilight realm between the dimensions. Unlike many others, you survived, body and mind, mostly intact. Ever since, you have existed from day to day in the gray gloom of the old eel house, waiting for that man to call. A man whose very existence you are now beginning to question. Until you wake into another layer of the nightmare. Until the visit at the old attic. So I do believe that is the dismal man. And he would like us to follow him. So let's go down and check our journal before we get started. Maybe. Okay, there we go. A year ago, I met this mysterious gentleman. I can recall little about him but his name. The Dismal Man. He knew about the Black Day and also the fact that I'd be in Arkham. He told me to find him. But who is he? Does he have answers? I awoke in the attic of the old eel house to the light of the Dismal Man's lantern. It seems he wants me to follow him. And this is our basic menu, and we will get to this in just a moment. First, let's grab a lantern. And let's follow. So, my capture card isn't the greatest with darkness sometimes, so if this doesn't show very well, I do apologize. It will show here in just a moment. It's not a huge fan of darkness, and without being able to adjust brightness settings within the game, um, not much I can do about it at the moment. So here we are in the streets of Arkham. Statue of Cthulhu right there is uh, nice. <laughs> we'll come back and see that in just a moment. But I believe the Dismal Man would like to show us something.
Oh, we have spirits. Oh, and they're dancing. Well, isn't that nice? But as we follow the dismal man, um, things begin to become fuzzy. And it's no longer cute. In fact, one might venture to say it's pretty fucking horrifying. Look at this guy. Right here, he's just getting it. And just like that, we awaken from our nightmare. And we've lost 15 sanity for witnessing a horror. The last spot I saw the dismal man in my dream was by the gates of Miskatonic University. Perhaps I should take a closer look. So if you are aware of Lovecraftian horror um, and his mythos, you know what Miskatonic University is. If you're not aware, um, it is a university that is in a few of Lovecraft's stories, most notably the Dunwich Horror and the Shadow Over Innsmouth um, talks about a few professors from Miskatonic. But I'm going to do my best not to spoil any of Lovecraft's stories here. Oh wow, we got a 270 rifle. That's pretty nice. Some ammo, a notebook, a safari license, some rations, cigarettes. These are now the currency in the city of Arkham. SIG is the new monetary unit of this pestilent reality. The ever-depleting stocks of SIGs will lead to inflation sooner or later if the basic rules of economics continue to apply in this twilight dimension. The license is issued to rangers and guides working for Lion's Den Safari Club in Kenya. Only individuals showing superior physical prowess and experience in the field are able to earn such a certificate. So, this is where we are. That's our journal. This is our map. We're here in Riverside. We have French Hill to the east, Main Street and Miskatonic to the west, um, and a lot of very weird drawings. Miskatonic River, never go there. Beware of the red boats. Follow him, he knows, in my dreams. And all the trees are dead. This is a grimoire, which for my occultist character was full of spells, but... Yeah, we don't have spells as a explorer. And we have our character page right here. With no perks or abilities because this is a demo. So here we are in the actual bar of Old Eel Bar. Uh, most of these people don't want to have any conversations with us. But I believe the bartender would like to speak to us. You see Marino, the manager and bartender of the Old Eel. He's been your host for almost a year now. Of course, in return for your last precious resources. He has a tendency to suck you dry whenever he gets the opportunity. Good morning, Cornuto. If you can call this never-ending fucking twilight morning, what was all that hurly-burly upstairs? Bad dreams? Well, you could say that. Why am I not surprised? I recommend hitting the bottle before going to sleep. It makes things easier. But since you're awake, let's talk about the cigs you owe me. You were too drunk to pay yesterday and told me to remind you later, remember? I didn't drink yesterday, Marino. But I'm sure you did. Don't you trust your giving host? Where would you be now if I hadn't accommodated you? You'll have all my cigs soon, why the hurry? He pauses and smiles. I can't argue with that. Consider this one on the house. I better go. So if you haven't gotten the chance to play this yet, yes, if you haven't gotten the chance to play this yet and you are interested in it, um, it is up on Steam for free. Here's our little statue of Cthulhu. The towering depiction of one of the Elder Gods perches atop the naked base of a shattered statue. 
The decapitated statue of President Lincoln perfectly symbolizes the fate of American ideals in this horrid place. The people of Arkham have chosen fear over liberty, surrendering their future to subjugation and the rule of the mob. And notice that mob was capitalized. It's not like rule of mob like the like mob. This is rule of mob like Cosa Nostra. You see a typical Arkham resident, tired and decrepit looking at. She looks at you uneasily. What is this grotesque monument? The cult erected it in the place of the old Lincoln statue. Grandfather Altar, they call it. It's a damned atrocity. Cultists come from across the river to sacrifice people who have been marked by the mob. Blood offerings to Grandfather Cthulhu. Cthulhu? Even the name freezes my blood. The Grandfather, they call him. Their new god who awakened on the Black Day with its brethren, the Great Old Ones. The fanatics of the cult torture, sacrifice, and kill in their names. Eh, why am I not surprised? Now, if you'll excuse me... I am very oddly dressed for all of this. So if you hit Alt, you can see the things you can interact with. Rope, some cigarettes. Oh, and we do have something over here worth mentioning. This once busy warehouse belonged to the infamous Marsh family of Innsmouth. As you approach, your blood runs cold at the sound of distant wailing from within. You cannot decide if it's human. Yes, so the Marsh family from Innsmouth. If you've ever read The Shadow Over Innsmouth, that name might mean something to you. If you haven't, and you like the work of Lovecraft, go read it when you get the chance. So we're gonna go east before we go west. You see a skinny woman wearing heavy makeup. Her provocative outfit emphasizes how she learns her live her how she earns her living in Arkham. I'd like to f not flub words once in a while. She moves like a person drugged or drunk. Oh hi, darling. Interested in a good time? Goodbye. <laughs> yes, we we do not have time for that today. We are here to discover a mystery, not bang hookers. So there are all sorts of buildings we can click on here, and they each have their own little piece of lore to them. Uh, most of them we can't actually do anything with, and I don't know if once the game is in full completion, if that'll change, or if they're just there to provide scenery and lore. But you can see, as I look around, there's plenty of places here. And mobbed up guys everywhere, made men. So, the east part of town, not much better than any other part of town at the moment. Oh yeah, so what do we have here? A bus. Daily fares to Innsmouth. Could this be? Having served its time on a daily run to Innsmouth, this bus never suffered from an abundance of customers. Yet now this timeless limbo has left it with no purpose at all. Yes, that is the infamous bus that runs to Innsmouth. So if you ever want to go and see what they're hiding at Innsmouth, you take that bus right there. Oh, we have a shiv. So we will just switch to this and drop this little boy right there. Switch back to our rifle. Pretty powerful rifle. Alright. This is Schmidt's Antiques. An old man is sitting behind the dusty counter, surrounded by a variety of odd objects. He doesn't seem pleased to see you. Yes? Are you looking for something in particular? What is this place? This is Schmidt's Antiques, or what's left of it. I am Isidore Schmidt. Like the merchandise, I have been gathering dust here for a good long while. 
Tell me, how may I assist you? Or perhaps, how can you assist me? It's a very nice collection of keys you have. Thank you. If I put my life into this collection, though it's unfortunately incomplete. Why the interest in keys? I've always been fascinated by keys. I started collecting them in my childhood. It was simply a hobby, of course, until the Black Day. What changed after the Black Day? It's not important. Just remember that I will pay handsomely for keys. Alright. Tell me, how may I assist you? Or perhaps, how can you assist me? May I see your wares? Indeed, this is what I'm here for. But first tell me, if you see something you desire, how do you intend to pay? What did you have in mind? Keys. I collect them, you see. All sizes and shapes. If you happen to come across any keys in this accursed place, bring them to Schmidt's Antiques. Okay. So, but if you accepted SIGs and trade, it would allow you to obtain more keys. I have all the SIGs I need. Fair enough. Let's see what you got. So he'd sell cigars, cigarettes, this pretty sweet revolver, a dagger, a voodoo hat, um, a bunch of books, and some other stuff. That's really all he's got. None of it really pertains to us, but it might pertain to a different build of character. Alright, well, let's go check out Miskatonic then. In our incredibly goofy old school outfit with our pith helmet. That is a pith helmet, right? Yeah, it's a pith helmet. So, just kind of looking around at the moment, seeing what we have to go on. Not a whole hell of a lot. In fact, the only thing over in this part of town is the old eel house. And a drugstore. So we're going to make our way to Main Street. So here we have a pawn shop. Honest Bill's Pawn. They sell guns and ammo and things like that. I mean, it's a pawn shop. Of course, like everything here, it's controlled by the mob. But we do have a somewhat odd person up here at the top of Main Street. The wretched creature before you can hardly be described as human. It is wearing odd clothes and has wrapped its face and hands in tattered rags. Its cringing, confused movements further verify the status of this unfortunate outcast. Why have the crew Oh, he's voice acted. That's actually pretty awesome. So my first playthrough, um, I didn't know this was here. And I came back and played this a few times without recording it. And uh, found this. And yeah, I I think that that's pretty awesome. He's voice acted. You know, it, it's voice acted in the demo. So maybe some other characters might be voice acted in the, the final version of the game. The moment he sees you, the pitiful creature draws back in horror. Wait, I mean no harm. You sense the creature observing you with its yellow, ghoulish eyes barely visible behind the filthy rags. Harm is the only thing your kind brought me. To think I once foolishly believed us to be kind. Leave me alone. The creature scurries quickly away from you. I know always that I am an outsider. That is a Lovecraft quote. I already went through this. So we're just going to kind of run around here real quick and grab stuff. Most of these buildings, like I said earlier, you can't really go in them yet. And they all have little lore bits, but that's not important to us at the moment, I don't believe. Although one of the newer buildings in town, the supernatural darkness has reduced the post office to decrepitude, entering the letters of the damned betwixt its vine-covered walls. There must be heaps of undelivered correspondence inside. 
And then, of course, over here we have the Essex Hotel. Only a year ago had anyone suggested Arkham's most prestigious lodgings would degrade into festering hive of debauchery. He would have been jeered into silence. Yet the reality in this case is bleaker than imagination. Pleasure is damnation. Oh, that's another hooker over there. We're just going to avoid her. I already grabbed this stuff. Yeah, I did. Okay. Fair enough. Sometimes it's hard to keep track of time and what you're doing. Okay. So the gates to Miskatonic University look impassable. The iconic gates of this institution of higher learning lie in ruins. The way is impassable for now. Yep, literally just said that. But we do have something here. And a journal update. I found a peculiar key at the entrance to the ruined university, marked with the number zero. Perhaps I could find someone to tell me what it unlocks. So it's a key, and remember the guy we met with earlier, who likes to sell keys? Maybe, maybe he can help us. So we're going to run all the way back to the east side of town. You see a dark-skinned, well-built man approaching you. He does not seem to be from these parts. He seems unaffected by the current conditions of Arkham, and there is something inviting, almost provocative, in his thin smile. Hola, senor. Pl please forgive my interruption, but I have been seeing you at the Old Eel and wanted to introduce me mismo. Myself? My Spanish isn't great. I grew up in Oklahoma. You'd think I'd be able to speak Spanish, but it, no, I can't. Um... Go on. I'm called Eduardo. Eduardo Carnala, to be exact, but there is nothing special about my name, De La Familia. I am just a son of another poor fisherman from Kojimar. Yet I carried the Carnala name to this far part of the world. Now all that remains is our past, no? You may be right. I'm 3F John. Eduardo shakes your hand eagerly. A pleasure to meet you, senor. You're here for something, right? I have a sensation that you need my services. Different from you, I am accustomed to this, the survival in the streets, this never-ending sobreviviente. Don't know what any of that means. I mean, I know, obviously, sensation, but no idea what that is. Dude, I'm an explorer. Like, different from you. Different from me, how? I traveled the whole world. My character's backstory says he traveled to Africa. Like, how are you How are you really going to say you're different than me? But whatever, let's go on. I've survived the Spaniards, the American occupation, the, then Civil War, then the American again. No hard feelings, though. I survived in Kenya. But you see my point now. I know what to do when things get, what do you say, hot. I can be the difference between life and Santa Muerte, the saint of death. So are you offering to fight for me? What do you want in return? Um... Uh, yeah, here we go. A more con a more se paga y los y lo demos con dinero. Love can do much, money can do everything. If you pay me my six, senor, you'll have to, you'll have your own special angel protector. How much for bodyguard duty? Two dozen six for each day I protect you. I don't care if you're fighting monsters or the mob or El Diablo himself. Two dozen cigs. It's 24 cigarettes a day. I have a little over a hundred right now. However, the demo I don't believe takes place for longer than a day, so I'm not actually going to have to pay this guy. And if he dies or I put a bullet in his back, I sure shit don't have to pay him. Follow me. Bueno, lead the way, senor. Eduardo, Con Eduardo Carnala, your angel protector, is by your side. Come on, mercenary. So yeah, the first time I played through this, um, I just happened to find where I'm supposed to go next on accident without actually going back to the key guy first as my occultist, and never picked up Eduardo. 
Um, I didn't realize that could happen until later on, after I had died two or three times, and then decided to explore the city a little bit more before going to the next part of the game, as I'm knocking my knees on my desk. Alright. So there's the antique store. Oh, the antique store. Yeah, so this is the mob base, if you can't tell by just looking at the fact they have six guards on duty at any time. Hey, remember me, dude? Yes, are you looking for something in, in peculiar? In particular. Pfft. I wish I could read and speak English correctly sometimes. What do you know about this key? You see a flash of greed in the old man's eyes. He hastily takes some notes to a peculiar notebook on the counter. Is it numbered zero? Oh, how interesting. Where did you get such a rare one? From a mysterious man, but I found it because of a dream. Long story. Some dreams indeed hold value. What can I offer you for that key, my friend? A key numbered zero would be a very fine addition to my collection. Tell me about it first, and I'll think about it. Forgive me, but I don't trust people easily. This particular habit has also helped me tremendously in staying alive. 506. Is it for sale now? Uh, no. 706. That's my final offer. Don't waste your breath. I'm not going to sell it. A thousand. Right now. Losing this key will put everything in jeopardy. You won't change my mind. I'm sorry. If you're not selling keys to me, then I'm afraid our conversation is over. I can pay for information. Not very tempting. But if, if you also give me your word to bring the key after you're done with it, this may start to look like a deal. I mean, sure, I promise. 56 and your word to bring me the key. Is it a deal? Oh, he wants 50... Wow. Uh, I'll think about it. One more thing. Okay, so, look. This is his journal right here. Examine. A notebook with the key symbol on the covers under the title Keys, Paths, and Meanings. What does athletics do? You may try to grab the notebook quickly before the old man reacts. Uh oh. Give me my notebook back now. No! Come on, Eduardo! Run! Run! Uh. Inventory. Did we lose him? Okay, cool. Inventory. <laughs> the old man didn't even try to stop me. Comprehensive catalog of Isidore's keys, including sketches, notes about the peculiar shapes, and the numerology... numerological meanings assigned to them. This notebook is a testament to both his obsession with the Kabbalah and with the keys themselves. I love how I know the word Kabbalah off the top of my head, and I can't say numerological. It's been a long day, everybody. <laughs> okay, um... Interesting. So there's a lot of different key types here. Door key, chest key, door key, door key. Magical sigil key. That's interesting. Alright, down here, entry 43. But that is not our key. Ghost key? Chest key. Chest key. Oh, no, wait, I wasn't done with that. Come back, please. Thank you. Chest key. Magical sigil key. I'd like to know what that is. Maybe that'll be in the full game. Meds and door key. Bank of Arkham safe deposit key. Rare. Very potent. Very recently crafted, simple design, modern safe key. Oh, man. Now I know what it feels like to be the doctors trying to read my handwriting up at the university. I have no idea. I write in cursive and I can't tell what that says. The bow breaks? Like all other Bank of Arkham keys. Double stop, very short blade. Well-rounded, rectangular pre-junctions. Very deep lendings. This... Oh, man. 
I, I owe an apology to every professor in college that I've ever turned in a handwritten assignment to because my handwriting looks like that and I can't read that. <laughs> Anyways, um, I do believe that is our key, the Bank of Arkham Safe Deposit Box key. And just to be sure, inventory, where's our key? Yep, that's it, right there. A plain brass key with the number zero carved on it. Your heart grows cold when you hold the key in your hand and feel the chilling metal. Let's go to our journal. At last I've learned what the key unlocks. A Bank of Arkham safe deposit box. I should explore the ruins of the bank in the main street to uncover more. This is no man of Arkham, or even of Earth. There's nothing human under those rags. Your kind brought this upon us. Oh, don't mind me, I'm just passing through. Cursed creature, hey, hey, don't throw poop at him. Demon, whoa, okay. The angry mob before you is about to lynch this miserable being you encountered a short while ago. It seems this outsider has been chosen as the scapegoat for what these people suffered in the wake of the Black Day. Leave him alone. The crowd turns to you with a mix of fear and hatred in their eyes. One of them shouts at you. Are you in league with this? This demon? Don't you see what this kind has brought upon us? Look at what you've become. Do you think we've returned to the Dark Ages? The one leading the crowd shouts at you with anger. Shut your mouth. Leave the poor creature alone and go to your homes now. You are in league with the damned too? Attack! Purge the evil. All right, Eduardo. Come on, buddy. Let's save uh, the bandaged man. Struggle begins. And here is our turn-based combat. Okay, I don't have a lot of ammo, so we're just going to hold up here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Come on, Eduardo. Pull out that pistol. There you go, buddy. Bang! Oh. Uh-oh. Hey, don't you hit that guy. And don't throw poop at him. New turn begins. How do I switch weapons? Whoa, I have spells. Why do I have spells? Oh, because this is me. Oh, neato. Okay, well, I actually understand some of these. Grimoire, it doesn't bring up mine because it only brings up my character. Interesting. Um... I'm going to use a spell and smack this guy a little bit. Ooh, dropped him and took the sanity of the people following him. Bang. Bang. Seriously, dude, you need to learn how to shoot. How do I switch weapons? Character. Inventory. Switch to my knife, because I want to save my gun. Uh, let's, uh, shanky shank. Oh, he's going to run. He's going to run. They're all going to run. Stab. Stab. Um, we'll take a defensive stance. And then... Do you have any other... We'll just go ahead and reload here. Pop him one more time. Take our defensive stance. 
Let's chase this guy out. Oh, I don't have any. Oh, they all ran away. And we got cigarettes and a cigar for our trouble. You know, me and Eduardo, we make a pretty good team. And so do you, uh, bandaged man. I just wanted to... Why did you intervene on my behalf? No one should pay such a price for simply looking different. Are you not human? Is this a disguise? It's not. I am human. For whatever reason you aided me, know that I am incapable of helping my own self. Leave me be, then I may continue my search for that accursed man. What man? The man in black with no face. A man with the cane of bones. The ghostly tapping of his stick still rings in my ears. You mean the dismal man? The dismal man. How fitting. Do you know him? Yeah, you could say that. Then you're as doomed as I am, stranger. And my bones, I know no good will come from finding him. Yet, I have nothing else except to find him. His countenance was the last thing I saw before finding myself in this purgatory. Perhaps we could look for this man together. It is no coincidence that you know the man with the cane of bones. Perhaps I shall walk with you for a time. May I ask your name? I... I don't remember. I am unsure if I ever had one. But I know one thing. Wherever the fate tosses me, I remain the outsider. Well, whoever you are, it is a pleasure. He gazes at you without a word. So some of his lines are... Um, let's go. Some of his lines are... Oh, there's Eduardo. Okay, what I was trying to say, some of his lines are voice acted and other ones aren't. No biggie, though. So let's go to the bank. First, let's go to the pawn shop. Oh, he's going to wait outside. Fair enough. I understand that the mob people may not be his biggest fan. Behind the bars is a stern-looking man who looks deeply dissatisfied. Although he looks to be in his 60s, the man evokes a certain kind of respect and fear. Say, are you here to buy something, or are you just wasting my time? I'd like to trade. If you got the cigs, and don't forget, the mob pays good money for bullets. Alright, so he doesn't want any of this stuff. Let's give him some rope. And a shovel. And you can have this blank notebook. And that cigar. And I need... Is this 270 ammunition? It is. 10 rounds would cost me 120 cigs. So then I owe you, what, 30 cigs? Fair enough. There we go. You got any of that stuff I can heal myself with? He's got some pretty cool uh, outfit stuff here. Of course, at the moment, none of it's really of much use to us, especially in the demo, as it's not like we can come back later. But it's cool to see the things that Stygian plans to include in this game. Alright. Come on, bandaged man. Let's go down to this bank. And speaking of seeing things in the inventories for... that you can trade for, even though you don't get the stuff to actually do it yet in the demo, even though some of the stuff doesn't serve you any purpose in the demo, I do like seeing it, and... You got it. Fucking loony. Can I interact with his body? Oh. His demented venture ended prematurely. And pitifully. 
But, um, as I was saying before I was rudely interrupted by a raving lunatic in a diaper... Are you just going to be stuck saying that up there? Anyways, if Cultic Games delivers on half of what's implied by this game and half of what's promised of what we've seen so far, this is going to be an amazing game. Absolutely, hands down. This will be a completely and totally fantastic game. Um, there's not nearly enough Lovecraftian games out there. I mean, that that's kind of what we do at this channel. We play Lovecraftian games, so take it from me. There's just not enough of them out there. And while it is picking up some, some of the ones that used to be out are no longer available or they don't work. Can I fix this? Not my kind of place. Um, all right. Anyways, I guess he's just going to say that from now on. Nothing's your kind of place anymore, is it? Um, oh, and here are the crazy people again that live inside the bank. So the struggle begins. Is that our outsider right there? I do believe it is. All right, high reaction. So I'm going to take cover here. And take up a defensive stance. You come here and take up defense. And let them come to us. Now there is one nice thing about combat in this game. Is you don't have to completely eradicate your enemies. They can flee. Or you can take down some of them and wear them out. And then you see these purple squares here. This is our retreat. Eventually, they'll get white squares behind them, and that way you can just get past them and survive the conflict without actually destroying them. Let's put this guy down. And, uh... Reload. And yes, the raving lunatics sometimes attack each other by lightening a friend's burden. A new turn begins, and they get to move first this time. Howl of insanity. This causes us to lose sanity, which is not a great thing. Okay, we took him down. Gotta get a line of sight on these ones. Go ahead and cast a spell with the bandaged man. And then get him out of the way. Yeah, that hell of insanity is a killer, man. It will just destroy your sanity. Let's come here, and let's just move past them. Well, if we can. Retreat. There, he's out. Oh, it's moved the, the things for me. Oh, he's despairing, though, so he's not going to get a chance to harm me this time. You get out of here, man. I'll take this from here. And we will just make our way past them. Now, we're not actually retreating this way. We're just moving on past them. We've worn them down enough that we can continue to move on. And it's still not his kind of place. The hood of this armored vehicle was stove in when the driver smashed through the wall. By the look of it, he's suffering a painful death in the process. And it's still not his kind of place. It's alright, man. It's not anybody's kind of place, if, unless you're a lunatic. Got cigarettes, screws, and more rations. Now, rations, um, they're not 
mandatory for this demo by any stretch of the imagination. In the main game, you each party member will use one ration per day. However, much like me not having to actually pay Eduardo over there, we only go through one day here in the demo. So, you know, just playing the demo, don't worry too much about that. When the main game comes out, you better remember it. Bank manager's note. I've never been a man who puts any stock in superstition. Yet my experience today has shaken my once strict convictions. I had an, my once strict convictions. I had an unannounced visitor. He was a tall man, dressed in a finely cut suit and top coat, all of an impenetrable black. Impenetrable black. I'm just messing it up today. And his face, well, peculiar as this may sound, I do not remember a damned thing about it. Not his age, the look in his eye, or the color of his hair. Hey. He flubbed up his writing. When I try to recall these details, my mind goes blank. Well, my friend, it sounds like you're suffering a small bout of insanity. It tends to happen to people in Arkham and the surrounding areas of Innsmouth and Dunwich. I wonder why that is. <laughs> Let's come on and move on through. Alright, let's see what we can mess with. If you hold Alt, I may have already said this, but if you hold out Alt, it'll light up things that you can interact with. Okay, so I can't give him anything. Can I take his bandages off? No, I can't take any of his stuff off, can I? Aw, fair enough. Alright, we've got plenty of stuff here, and so if we need to sell anything, Blood Circle, Host of the Loa, Spirit of Al-Razi, and Evil Eye. So these are the spells that our friend has given us. The Blood Circle, the caster performs a ritual to create a provocative, a protective circle around herself, sacrificing a portion of her own health in the process. Complications. The caster's own blood must be spilled to complete the ritual. The Host of the Loa. The spirit summons a voodoo spirit. The spell summons a voodoo spirit, which is housed in the body of the target. The host becomes immune to most conditions and draws all enemy attention onto herself. Complication. If the caster fails a will check, the low all will become enraged, attacking friend and foe alike. Evil Eye. A sickly eye gazes upon the caster's enemy, who suffers reduced combat capabilities and an increased chance of critical failures. Complication. If the caster suffers from paranoia, there is a chance the spell will target the caster's strongest ally instead of an enemy. The Spit of Al-Razi. The caster turns her saliva into corrosive acid and spits forth onto the chosen target. That's the one we have been using. Complications. If the caster fails an agility check, she takes 2 to 4 corrosive acid damage herself. We're over here in Main Street. Um, yep, okay. Still not his kind of place, apparently. Um, hey dude, why are you hanging out here? A strangely presentable man in a sharp suit waits eagerly at one of the destroyed cash counters. The moment he sees you, he begins to speak rapidly and enthusiastically. Hello sir, how may I assist you? As you can see, this has been a very busy day. It looks like the boom has finally come to Arkham. It's nice to see our little town thriving, don't you think? Let's play along. Sure is. Of course you agree, sir. We all share the same dream in this country, after all, as proud Sita. His voice cuts off abruptly, interrupts, and he freezes in place. He doesn't even blink. He looks almost like a living statue. Uh, excuse me, sir. Some men are endowed by their creator with certain alienable rights. Let me help you with your transaction, sir. May I see your credentials, please? Um, does this suffice? Give him our safari license. He instantly grabs the object from your hand. Let me see. It says you're a nomadic big head. Nomadic big head? Well, you're an asshole. 
Here you are, documents, sir. I hope they will aid you in the game of misery, piss, and shit. Well, he seems like a friendly guy, doesn't he? Struggle begins. Hey, don't you swing at me. Okay, here's the deal. We're going to retreat from this fight because we don't want to waste our resources getting out of here. We don't have to fight. And just like that, we make it through. And it's still not his kind of place. <laughs> it's actually kind of a funny little bug. Oh! Oh, it's different now. Alright, we got people hanging out here. Now, if you saw my last playthrough of this demo, you might recognize this area as the place where our occultist character went mad and lost it all. His sanity finally left him, and that was it. Let's get past this part this time, because I have a strong suspicion we're nearing the end of the demo. There's that howl of insanity again. I do want to figure out, by the time this full game comes out, if this is random up here, this order of attack, or if there's a method to the madness. Alright, we're going to take cover. And then fire at will. Boom! Oh, I grazed him. Are you serious? Um... Uh, We'll use that spit of Al Razi on this one. Why did we have a critical failure? What the hell was that? Okay, how's he holding up on health? Howl of insanity. Oh great, my sanity's hurt again. New turn begins. And once again, they get to go before me, and my two power hitters go dead last. Despite the fact my agility is at 10. That one's dead. Use another spit of Al Razi. Oh, he's down. What's happening? Okay, there we go. This one's gonna swing at me, but he's gonna miss. He's gonna miss twice. Bad news bears for you, buddy. Boom! You're down. Now it's three to one. You don't want to run away, you lunatic. Eduardo, protect me. You, make it to the exit. Retreat. Is this me? Oh, it is. Boom! Reload. Take her down. There we go. Crushed. The party successfully vanquished all of its enemies. We got some more experience points. We got some cigarettes, a couple of keys, 
um, this weird thing down here. And leather strips is what it looks like. We also got plus five angst. And yes, this is like the angst you had when you were 14 and rebelling against your parents. The more you kill people, the more angst you get. I don't actually know what it does, if it does anything at all in this demo, but... It will probably, most likely, do something in the main game. Oh, it's still not his kind of place, is it? Alright, so a few things. Inventory. Bank Manager Note 2. Notes written by the old bank manager detailing his interactions. But stronger still, I swear by our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that he knew about Frederick. He knew of my one and only son, about his incurable disease, and not just the fact of it, but every symptom, every maddening detail. He claimed to have certain powers, that he could cure my boy. Also, he asked in return that I install on his behalf a safe marked with the number zero. It would be our little secret. Well, that's definitely something, isn't it? How do I use lockpicks? Is that just not a thing in, in the demo? By the way, that is a creepy little thing we picked up. Junk fetish. This fetish object haphazardly pieced together with wires and knickknacks was once worn by a lunatic. I'd actually like to own something like that. I think that'd be pretty cool. Own a little uh, clock-faced, watch-faced, creepy thing like that. I'd set it up on my collectible shelf. Anyways. How's my health looking? Uh, we're alright. I wish I could figure out how to use this. Sturdy safe is surprisingly unspoiled thanks to its dependable locking mechanism. I just, I wonder... I'm starting to think you just can't use lockpicks. And... Yeah, I was thinking that you can't use lockpicks in the demo. See, there's all sorts of stuff we can interact with in here. Never actually made it this far. Got more rations, more old junk dollars. Oh, lots of cigs. That's pretty nice. I'm up to 157, and Eduardo is still not getting paid. Sorry, buddy. Um, when your use comes to an end, I'm just going to put a bullet in your back. I got 13 more bullets, 4 here. It's 13, so I have 17 more rounds. I don't know how many rounds Eduardo has. Um, okay, which way do we go? Let's go this way. Uh-oh. I don't think this is the way to go. Let's just back out quietly. I, I do not believe our safe deposit box is over here. We're, we're just gonna pretend like those guys weren't there. Slowly back out. There we go. Let's... I know it's not your kind of place, bandaged man, but we can't do anything about that right now. Alright. Empty syringes, blank notebooks. Um, let's go check this one out over here. Bank manager's note, 22 ammunition. Reggie's whiskey. Crave cigarettes. What are those? This bottle of Reggie's brand whiskey was shipped to Arkham before the Black Day. It's a rare to find something like this unopened. Um, so, by the way, everything in this game has a crafting trait. Well, not everything, but many things in this game have crafting traits. Um... 
Crafting just not introduced yet in the demo, obviously. 22 ammunition, that's for a 22 uh, revolver. Our character was lucky enough to start out with a pretty cool rifle. Bank Manager's Note 3. However, I try to erase it from my mind. I cannot forget the man's reply when I ask the significance of the number zero. Well, little man, every countdown ends with zero, does it not? This safe will be necessary after the end. The end of all that is. God forgive me, but I did what he asked. I concealed the accursed safe in the wall in my office two nights ago. He seemed... that... What? It seems, it seems, not he seems. That damned motivational poster sent a purpose after all. Served a purpose after all. I owe so many people an apology for my handwriting. I sink in dark waters now, and God forgive me, should I vanish. Um... So these are safety deposit boxes. This one can be interacted with. I found the chamber housing the safe deposit boxes, but it seems the one I'm looking for is behind a newly repaired wall. If I cannot access the other side myself, I should find someone to help me. The haphazardous effort to brick up the hole in the wall is just someone wishes to conceal something behind it. Um, can I try my knife? Okay. Let's go. Okay. As I was saying before I accidentally jumped out of the game for a second, I need to find something that'll help me break this wall. Let's go back and check that other room. I can't just shoot holes in the wall? Alright. Let's go check that other room and see if we can't find something to break open the wall. Otherwise, we're going to have to go all the way back to town. Would you like to return to the entrance or continue exploring? Continue. Yeah, otherwise, we're going to have to go all the way back to town and buy something that can break open a safe. Not a safe. A hole in the wall. Have to go all the way back to town and find something that can break open a hole in the wall. Uh, let's see. See if any of these guys drop something when I kill them. How are you looking sanity-wise, buddy? 32 out of 70? Alright. Oh, you can't do that, can you? How about now? Nope. Need a line of sight. You know what? You can only hit people, so you move back here, actually. Waltz of Madness. Blow their heads off. Down he goes. Come on, let's just keep taking them out. Oh, reload. Oh, you missed. It's your deal, Eduardo. Still no cast? Okay. Try to keep range here and just pick them off. Once they get up here, I'll drop the bandaged man down to hit them. 
but he has no ranged attack except for the move that cost him his sanity. And we don't want to go insane again, which it looks like we're getting kind of hurt here. Getting ready to play that game. Do I have anything in my inventory that gives me sanity back? I do, but I, I'm just going to have to get to that in a moment. Uh-oh. Oh, he gets to swing on me again. Come on, why does he get three swings that time? What's up with that? And why am I aggroing everybody here? Okay, this is... Alright, this is me. Fuck you. Alright, inventory. Uh, oh, this gives us sanity. Sweet. Alright, I got some sanity back. Take a defensive stance. To blow their heads off, Eduardo. Bang! Man, he does not want to go down, does he? So yeah, when you only have a couple of action points left at the end of your turn, um, it's just kind of recommended to go to that defensive stance if you need to. Eduardo, can we please put this guy down? Thank you. Critical hit. Nice. And we did not get anything to break that door open with. Wait, wait back. Proceed. Alright. What do we have here? Gold ring, silver necklaces. Safe is locked. Alright, I'm going to have to go all the way back to town and find something to break that wall open with. Alright, so we're on our way back to try and figure out what we can use to break through the wall. And that guy's got a sledgehammer. You see a burly mob member watching the entrance of the ruined bank. Spit it out. Oh, hey, look at that. I need you to break down a wall for me. Where's he running off to? And I need some doll in my arms and some copperhead in my stomach. Instead, I'm stuck here chasing fucking loonies. Now beat it, unless you're willing to make it worth my while. Yeah, sure, I'll pay for it. 56. Yeah, it's not like I'm paying Eduardo. Hey, yo. Deal. Lead the way, mutt. This motherfucker just called me mutt? Oh, hell no. Let's see this wall you hate so much. It's still not his kind of place. <laughs> They say don't dig the past. Junkman. Okay. Cthulhu statuette. Dismal man's poem. Journal updated. The safe deposit box also contained a grotesque statuette of one of the awakened. Will it help me, I wonder, or hasten my doom? I finally acquired the safe deposit box zero, but it only raises new questions. There's an enigmatic poem found inside the box. Is it meant to be a prophecy or a set of veiled instructions? Perhaps both. So, uh, first things first, let's check out this sweet statuette. Cthulhu statuette. Enigma. A small, gray-green stone of idol of a grotesque winged creature. Although you cannot be sure of its age... It has an aura of abysmal antiquity. Fun story, I actually own something um, that looks very much like that. As I'm sure a lot of Lovecraft fans do. But yeah, I actually own a uh, small Cthulhu statuette. Just kind of a look into my own personal life. And the Dismal Man's Poem. This weird poem is maddeningly opaque, offering more in the way of confusion than clues. 
Reading and rereading the time-worn page, you wonder if you'll ever learn what the man you're after meant by writing it. If it means anything at all. The soul of a scavenger of the sea shall be found inside a bottle of lead. The last destination of a bodiless star starfarer shall be heard from the mouth not of flesh. The drop of crawling chaos, the crawling chaos, shall be stolen under the ruins once halls of wisdom. The viol of Zan shall be played at the underground gates of your ancestors, and the book shall be read which should not be read. Only then you may wish to call me by the timeless stones on the nameless isle. Only then you may wish to walk by me between the endless realms of pitch black. Do not interfere with us, ape. What is that? Some type of star spawn? Thanks for playing the demo version of Stygian, Reign of the Old Ones. Click there to pre-order the game. Until we meet again amidst the black seas of infinity. So that is it. That is the demo for Stygian. Obviously, I didn't look up every single little piece of lore there um, there are plenty of Easter eggs to Lovecraft's mythology, including but not limited to uh, obviously Miskatonic University, the bus that runs to Innsmouth, uh, the Essex Hotel. There are plenty of of little Easter eggs there, and I actually intend to go back through this demo um, a few, one more time and just get footage of the Easter eggs. And so I'll talk about what Easter eggs are available for now in the demo what we can see and maybe maybe just make some theories on where where Stygian goes from here what happens next after we run into that creepy star spawn looking thing so final thoughts as far as I have for this demo right now um, I absolutely love this game I think it's fantastic I am looking forward to this like no other. I, I don't know the exact release date. I think it, they said it was 2019. You know, maybe maybe it gets done earlier. Maybe, maybe it comes out in 2019. But either way, I am absolutely looking forward to this full game. If it delivers on half, half of what we see in character customization and Easter eggs to the Lovecraft mythos and just the mythos in general, this will be hands down the best RPG in years. That's my opinion. That is the hot take of 3F John. We're doing hot takes here now with the Lovecraftian gaming channel. Fuck Skip Bayless. <laughs> so, until next time, I am 3F John and I will see you all in the next video.